Hey guys, George from Soundtracks here, and this week we're actually at my friend Gary's place, and he's commissioned me to do an installation with Blue Nami and battery power on his AccuCraft C16 for large scale. So let's go ahead and dive in and see what it takes. Now in this particular installation, as I mentioned, we want to install a Blue Nami Blue 4408. So we have our Blue 4408 steam, and so we're going to install that inside the locomotive. Now a couple of things is, number one, we have our battery. Now in this particular case, uh, Gary got a battery from our friends at CVP Products. This is a 14.8 uh, volt with 6.8 amp hours or 6800 milliamp hours. Uh, so this should give him plenty of time and of course it's got our wires for the battery on there. The other thing that this particular installation required is that we want to put a charging port and so on that we were actually using our two pin connector that's part number 810012 and we're going to install that in here so that the charging port can simply plug right in and without having to take apart the model we're going to go ahead and install the battery so that that way the charging port will allow access for charging without having to take the tender shell apart. Now the other thing is that we're putting in a double pole double throw toggle switch to allow us to be able to route that battery power either to the decoder to be able to run the model or we're going to route it to the charging port which allows us to charge in or when the charging port is unplugged technically it's off. So we're going to go ahead and open this model up. We're going to do some diagnostics. We're going to see if we can figure out what wires are for what purpose. And then we're going to see where we're going to go and what we're going to do with it. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Now, after a quick disassembly, we've actually got our locomotive apart. And then we have our tender shell off. And it just comes off with four screws. We've removed that. And in this case, there's actually three screws. There's actually one up front and then one on either side underneath the cab that allowed us to lift the tender shell or the locomotive shell off. Now, the reason we're doing this is because there's an eight wire connector between the locomotive and tender. And we wanted to verify not only what the purpose of each of those eight wires are, but also wanted to verify what type of lighting devices are inside the model to determine what resistors we may or may not need. Now, in this particular case, it appears that these are 12 volt light bulbs, so that's a good thing. We can actually just connect them directly to the decoder. And the other thing is that the eight, pi eight pins, we found that, the t and I've got a drawing here that you can see, and the two on the outer ones on the right are the, the two first pins on the right are the track power. So we can disregard those since we're not going to use track power at all in this particular installation. The next two are for our motor and doing some tests we found that the motor plus and then motor minus brings us to the middle of that eight wire connector. Then the next two illuminate the lights and all the lights are actually wired together. So we're just going to take those two wires and connect them to our light terminals on our decoder for the time being as a quick installation so that we can put it in, get the model running and going. And then the last two actually are for a smoke unit. And in this particular instance, we're just going to ignore the smoke unit for the time being. So that way we're going to go ahead and just disregard that. So we're only going to use four wires of that eight wire harness going into the locomotive. Now, if you wanted to repurpose those wires for other things, for example, separating the headlight and the marker lights and the firebox light, if you wanted to separate those, you could easily repurpose those other wires that we're not using. Just disconnect them off of the back of this uh, circuit board, as you see here in the picture, and then you can just simply repurpose it and rewire it. But in the essence of time on this particular installation, we're just going to go ahead and do a quick installation just to show you what it takes and also to get the model running on the track. So with that, the next step what we're going to do is we're actually going to remove this circuit board then and that's going to allow us some space and what we're going to do is we're actually going to mount the uh, battery down first and then we're going to mount the decoder on top of the battery. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow us space to be able to do what we need to do here and we can mount all that together in that nice concise little place and then we're going to do it that way. So with that loose you can see that this comes off. Now on the underside of this there are some slide switches back and forth that we can repurpose for other things. Um, you can also decide you may want to reuse them and particularly if you don't want to use the toggle switch or if you don't have one you can desolder them off of the circuit board and then repurpose them. So it's just entirely up to you. Now we have two wires here to our speaker that we're going to disconnect 
And then on our tender, we actually have four track power pickups. And again, we're not using track power in this particular installation, so we're gonna cut those off. And then we have two for a terminal here, which says battery, but it goes to a plug that's located outside the tender shell behind it. And so we're just gonna cut that out, move that out of the way, and then we're gonna put that in. And then the next thing we're gonna do is cut each of these eight wires. We're gonna label them to make sure we know which of the eight wires are for what purpose, so that that way when we remove this circuit board and free it up, we'll know where we're gonna put everything. So I've got my battery here, and the idea is we're gonna put that right there, and then we're gonna put our decoder on top of it right there. So we're gonna double check the test fit and space, make sure everything fits where we're expecting to, and then we'll be back in just a moment. Okay, after some evaluation and measuring, we actually found out that the decoder will not fit on top of the battery. So we've actually done some modifications to the model itself to help make room for the battery and the decoder and the speaker all in the tender while still using the factory supplied speaker and speaker mount. Now, on the tender shell, you can see here that we've actually cut two slots because the way we're gonna do this is the battery's gonna sit up here up front and then we're gonna take our decoder and mount it vertically just behind the battery, but just in front of the speaker. And now what we're doing is we've actually pulled one of these slide switches, one of these double pole, double throw slide switches off of the original circuit board, and we're gonna reuse it in here. Now the original thought was we would reuse these slots here, as you can see, and just put it there and then just mount it there with some glue or screw or something like that. But what ended up happening was that even that toggle uh, switch with the battery, it didn't give us enough room to mount that tender shell on, the deco on here, because you can see how high that battery sits in comparison to the body shell. So what we did is we actually mount, cut a hole here and we're going to drill some holes uh, for a screw. We're going to mount this slide switch there. And that's going to be our on-off uh, toggle switch that allow us to go one direction will be from the battery to the decoder. The other one will be from the battery to the uh, charging port. So that way we can have that as off. And you can see the illustration or the diagram right here on your screen. And this is how we're going to wire everything up for this particular model. Now on the other side, we've actually cut another hole and this is where the charging port is gonna go. Now, we're gonna wire the battery directly to this switch so we no longer need this plug. Now this plug actually mates to, and here it is, actually mates to this wire harness that was actually in the model itself. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this harness, we're gonna put it on the end of our charger and then we're gonna take this plug and made it up and mount that inside the model. So we're gonna cut the wires off of this battery. We're gonna mount the, the wire uh, from the battery to the switch and then wire from the switch to the decoder and then the switch to this plug and then this will be attached to the battery charger. Now, if that all sounds a little confusing, don't worry. Like I said, we have our wiring diagram here that we're following and we'll show you this. Now I'm not gonna do this work on camera just because it can get long and tedious and boring as I'm soldering wires together. But I'll show you the finished product here in just a moment. So we're gonna to go to work, we're gonna put this together and we'll be right back. Okay guys, so now I've gone ahead and got the battery attached. Now the battery, as I mentioned, is going to the center post of this toggle switch. And then one side of it goes to our decoder and the other side is going to the charging port. Now in this particular instance, we decided to use this connector because after looking at the charger, it actually had the mating uh, end for this connector. So that's the hole that we drilled in here. So we're not gonna reuse this two pin connector. We can actually set that aside and store it for some other use. But let's go ahead and fire it up and just test it. Now I still haven't connected my motor wires or my light wires yet, but we're just gonna take a test and just make sure it works. So we're gonna throw this toggle switch and we have powered our decoder. So you can see how this situation would work. So then we go to the other side and that's off or going to the charging port. And that's when you would toggle the switch that way. So the battery power routes to the toggle switch and then we plug in our uh, charger into that port. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna extend these wires with some of these other wires that we've taken out of our uh, model. We're gonna extend that and then we're gonna mount it to the decoder. And then this is actually all gonna sit in here just like this. And we're gonna test fit everything right now on camera. 
So drum roll, please. So we're going to put our charging port into here. And this should all fit in here if all my measurements worked out. And it looks like everything's going to fit. And then we'll just have to tuck these wires in when we put the tender shell on. And like I said, I haven't mounted the screw to this yet, but you'll be able to see that now everything will fit once it's all tucked in. Into the tender shell just like that. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add those extra lengths to the wires. I'm going to go ahead and solder the wires onto here, extend them, run them over to the decoder, and then we'll be able to put our locomotive back together, plug them together, and then we'll take them for a test drive here in just a moment. So we should be ready to go. So guys, I'm going to do that off camera. We'll see you in a minute. Okay, guys, we've got our locomotive put to back together. We've got our tender uh, wired up and everything. And we followed the diagram like I showed you in the pictures before. And here's a still shot of what the tender looks like up close so that you can actually see the installation in place. Now, on this particular locomotive, as I mentioned, there's no track power wire, so we were able to eliminate two of the wires to the locomotive. And then we didn't connect the smoke unit at this moment in time, so those two wires are disconnected as well. So we only had to connect the four wires from the motor and the headlight to the decoder itself. So I've got these right here. We've got the wires running over the battery. And then we've actually mounted the decoder vertically behind the battery. But one of the things with the Bluetooth chip, you want to make sure that you have about a half an inch around the Bluetooth module free from metal to make sure that you've got range so that you can broadcast and be able to communicate with that Bluetooth wirelessly. So we've got this all wired up. Let's fire it up and turn it on and see what it does. Now we're on top of a tabletop and we've got our power on. And so with this, uh, right now I have my friend Gary's phone. And we're going to go ahead and test run this. So we're going to go ahead and blow the whistle. And we're going to start moving forward. And we can see that it's moving in the forward direction. We're going to change directions. We're going to start moving in the reverse direction. You can see that we've got our motion. And then now we're going to turn on our headlight. And you can see that our lights are actually turning on. So we're good to go. So what we're going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and put these four screws. We're going to put the tender shell back on this. And then we're going to plug it back up. And we're going to show you one last time before we wrap this up. Now guys, I've got the tender shell back on it, and so you can certainly already, if you can hear it, a little bit more bass into the sounds, but I'm going to go ahead and start moving forward. And you can kind of hear that chuffing getting a little louder as it's working against my hand. And same thing, let's blow our whistle. And it's nice and loud, and that's because we put the tender shell back on it, so it gives the speaker a true baffle so that now that sound has nowhere to go but out from the tender and into your ears. So guys, that's been this installation showing you how to do a battery installation inside one of these large-scale models. Now, you can use these same principles for any installation that you're working on.
So guys, I'm gonna go ahead and go. Gary's pretty excited behind the camera. He really wants to run his train. So we're gonna go run some trains.